All right, so welcome. Our next presenter is Tom Lowers, who is the founder and CEO of BirdBrain Technologies, here to tell us about some very engaging and creative robots that would definitely be an asset to any enrichment program this summer and certainly can be carried over into the school year as a resource for the classroom. So I will stop sharing. And Tom, the screen is yours. Okay. All right, thanks, Diane. So I'm going to start uh, without a presentation. So um, make sure that you're in speaker view and spotlighting my video, I guess, uh, for recording. Um, but I'm the founder of BirdBrain Technologies, uh, which I started to inspire deep and joyful learning for all students through creative robotics. And by creative robotics, uh, I'm talking about the Hummingbird Robotics Kit, which is one of our products, and the Finch Robot. So I'm going to talk about both of these products today. The Hummingbird is a kit for upper elementary through high school students. And it basically has, let's switch over here. It basically has kind of all of the guts of a robot. So you've got your microcontroller right there, your battery pack. Um, you have different types of LED lights, so single color LEDs and tricolor LEDs, um, different types of motors. And then um, sensors, like here's a knob, here's a light sensor, and here's a distance sensor. Um, so what students do with this kit is they put it together to make all sorts of different types of animatronics and robotics projects. So projects like this, we call this a little bot, an LB. This one's dressed up like Harry Potter, and it has a pan tilt head in its, in its head, so it can rotate in different directions and kind of make a little motion. Um, so that's kind of one of the simpler robots, and we actually have the plans for that robot on our site, step-by-step -step instructions. But we also can go pretty deep. So here's a fairly advanced robot, Dragon, you know, with a mouth that opens, eyes that change color. Um, these wings can move up and down. And if you look inside it, and let me switch over here. I mean, it's a lot of wires uh, connected to the Hummingbird controller. Um, and then what I think is really important to recognize about Hummingbird is that it is optimized for interdisciplinary project-based learning. So you can basically throw a Hummingbird kit into any classroom or any subject and take the content from that core classroom, so that English language arts or that social studies or that science classroom, and combine it with robotics and engineering design and computer science. So here's, here's an example little project. It's a 2B-O-meter. Uh, so obviously has a bit of a Shakespeare kind of link, but you know, it's to be or not to be. And it just has a servo and an LED light and a sensor or a knob to kind of uh, you know, determine whether you want to be or not to be today. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about the Hummingbird kit. Uh, the way it was designed was in consultation at Carnegie Mellon University, initially with uh, groups of middle school girls and then with groups of middle school teachers. And the original project was actually all about making a kit for after school robotics activities to engage a new audience. This is way back in the late 2000s. Uh, but as we, as the project, the research project evolved, we started working more and more with teachers and we saw teachers using it in the classroom, in core curriculum. Uh, and that was actually really gratifying to see, to see that it was being used in such a way to engage all students because it was you know, required. It was in a core class, right? And then you're, you, you truly are engaging all students. So it can definitely be used in summer camps and um, has been used in such a way in probably thousands of summer camps at this point over the last decade, uh, but it will be a great asset uh, for uh, elementary schools, middle schools going forward also for using it in the classroom. Um, all right, so that's a little bit about the hummingbird. Let's talk now about the finch. So here's a finch robot. And 
The Finch uh, also came out of Carnegie Mellon Research. This is the second generation of the Finch robot. So some people may be familiar with the first generation, like Diane. Um, the second generation has been updated as of last year. And the Finch is all about learning computer science and computational thinking. And we designed the new version of the Finch to really work from kindergarten all the way up through college. And the way we do that is by having the Finch be programmable in lots of different ways. So at the, um, at the kindergarten, first, second, third grade level, you can program the Finch with an icon-based programming environment where you don't need to know how to program and you don't need to know even how to read in order to uh, move and turn the Finch, make it light up, make it make sound or make it play music. Um, once you progress beyond that sort of icon-based programming environment, you can use the Finch with blocks-based programming. So programming environments that you know, are similar to Scratch or similar to code.org that many of your students may already have some familiarity with. Um, and as you progress even further, you can program the Finch in standard Python, standard Java at the high school level, or even at the college level, you can even write your own Bluetooth apps to control the Finch. So we're really talking kindergarten to college, really thinking about that. And that illuminates kind of a core uh, pedagogical concept that we have when we design both of our products, which is that we try to make them low floor, high ceiling. So low floor means it's possible for an absolute beginner who's never done anything in robotics or coding to get started with our products. And high ceiling means that as you learn, as you grow, you can continue using those products. And that plays out in lots of different ways, but one way in which it plays out is in terms of differentiated instruction. So if you're at an upper elementary school level or middle school level, you may have a situation where you have, you know, uh, like an introduction to robotics or an introduction to coding class or camp. And some of your students may have actually been, you know, maybe using Kibo since they were four years old. Um, or uh, using Scratch Junior or Scratch, and they may know a lot, and you may want to throw them at program this robot in Python. At the same time, you may have other students in the same classroom who have never touched a robot before, and you want to make sure that your product can handle both of those use cases in a compelling way. All right, so now I'm going to go over to, to my slides and talk a little bit more specifically about, um, about you kind of where the the finch and hummingbird came from and also the resources that we have that you'll be able to use with it um so i've talked about hummingbird and finch uh and i've talked a little bit about how these were research based um so again both of these products came from research projects at carnegie mellon i was a phd student in the lab where they were created i was the actually the hardware designer and also uh, led some of the educational pilots that investigated how they worked. Uh, and one of the nice things about that research basis is that it gave us the opportunity through NSF funding to just work with dozens of teachers and hundreds of students before these ever came out as commercial products. And so we had a pretty good sense that they were working. In fact, I, there's no way that I would have founded Bird Brain Technologies if I didn't believe that they were working in the classroom and if I didn't have evidence of it. So we found through multiple studies, and this is a link to our research papers page on our website. And uh, the researchers who've conducted these studies aren't just all at Carnegie Mellon. I don't know them all personally at this point. We've actually seen it um, studied in a number of different contexts. But we found you know, increased engagement in STEM. That's a, a pretty standard one. And there's different studies have found different, kind of gotten at that question in different ways. Uh, one of the interesting things is, you know, we in these studies, we often ask students or teachers, would you want another student to have this opportunity? And we have rates, you know, depending on the study between 80 and 90% of students saying, yes, I would want other students like me to have the opportunity to do this. Um, and then we also, the hummingbird in particular, we actually had the opportunity to do some large scale studies with over a thousand students in you know several different school districts something like 20 20 something classrooms we found that uh using the hummingbird in the classroom increased technology fluency 
which is defined as the ability to manipulate technology creatively. Or another way to put it is, you know, instead of being technology consumers, these are technology creators, or these students feel that they are now technology creators. We found improvements in, uh, you know, well, some people might call these soft skills, but they're really essential 21st century skills like teamwork, persistence, conscientiousness, creativity. And we found a closing of gender gaps in STEM confidence. Um, so let me talk briefly about how to start. Um, one of the programs that we started as a result of the pandemic and that we are not getting rid of is uh, we allow any educator to borrow a Finch or a Hummingbird for free for 60 days. So you can evaluate the product at no cost. We even pay for shipping in both directions. So you can borrow one of these and then take our free asynchronous video PD. Uh, so we've created professional development courses that you can follow um, to you know, dive into how to use the Finch in say kindergarten, first or second grade, or how to use the Hummingbird in fifth grade. Um, and so these are all online. You can view them right now. This is a direct link to that PD. And then once you have completed that PD or once you've looked at it, um, you know, for the Hummingbird, if you're setting up a summer program, explore these classroom projects to inspire possible summer camp ideas. The classroom projects, there's over 50 of them. They were mostly submitted by teachers, either working with hummingbird kits in the classroom or in summer camp and after school activities. And there's just all sorts of different ways in which you can you know, decide to set up kind of a summer camp style program with the hummingbird. It's very flexible. So we've seen camps like writing and robotics, moving masterpieces, so an art-based one, robot Shakespeare, um, Amusement park physics, so a more sciencey one, they're all there, there's a ton of them. And then for the Finch robot, to set up a summer camp, take a look at our Finch activities. That's 30 plus classroom based activities. They'll run between 30 minutes and an hour and a half for your students to complete that are linked to computer science concepts. Um, I guess one last thing I should mention is there's also a standards alignment page on our website that you can go to where you can see how we've aligned um, these activities, these projects and our tutorials with CSTA and Common Core Standards. And then finally, just, you know, we're a small company. There are currently six of us. We're going on seven or eight in the near future. Um, so please reach out to us. You will get a human being. Um, you feel free to email us at info at birdbraintechnologies.com. My personal email is tom at birdbraintechnologies.com. So, you know, if you've gone through this and you need some advice or you need some additional live PD, we can definitely provide that. And then lastly, there is a, you know, if you're interested in more Zoom webinars or more webinars today, there just happens to be a webinar on the Finch robot that's a little bit of a deeper dive. Here's the information. It's at 7 p.m. tonight and it's with Maryland uh, computer science educators. So it, it's sort of your cohort already. Um, so yeah, that's it. Yay, thank you very, very much.